Thank you. Uh, hello, my friend. See you again. Uh, I'm P. Y. Cho. Uh, today, I, my second topic here is to present one special cases with the severe uh, facial asymmetry and uh, how we treat the her facial asymmetry using the uh, ochnotic surgery. Uh, actually, facial asymmetry is not uncommon uh, for the patient we had already deal with. However, it's difficult to find out one patient or uh, be diagnosed with the facial asymmetry since birth. Patient concern obtained to show in the Chang'an Forum. So this case is a uh, 28 years old female. Uh, uh, she came to our clinic for the follow-up for her facial asymmetry already more than 20 years. Uh, but uh, you will probably be wondering why he, she received the procedure in so late uh, timing uh, to do this. That's before because uh, she never to complain is any in the daily life the problem or any problem for her uh, usual routine that the works. So. Uh, she came to for us just for want to have a better looking and uh, with uh, much better the uh, crucial planning. So this time she decided to receive this uh, procedure because of uh, severe facial asymmetry, just like I showing in this uh, slide, and uh, with the mild occlusions. Uh, functionally, the patient has the normal in the vision, smell, sleep, and uh, dieting. Uh, for the pic pictures review, we can see uh, from the AP view and uh, from the bottom view, you can see this kind of facial asymmetry is not like the routine or as usual. You can see the mid face and the low face deviated from the different part. It's kind of opposite. Or you can see the nose is deviated to the right. However, her mandible is deviated to the left. Uh, but if you can uh, see this photo in detail, you can you can easily to know the bilateral orbit, the volume, and the dimension is not in the same label. So probably you can give her a, a diagnosis such as the progocephaly, but we can see later the ASCT to show is any progocephaly for her. This is her patient's the lateral view from the right side and from the left side. A much concave a photo uh, you can see from the right side or from the left side. The mid face is a little bit retreated, and uh, probably patient have to show kind of a class three mild occlusion uh, in her occlusal uh, lateral profile. This is a uh, patient's the occlusal problem. Um, you can see the right side kind of uh, close by happening, and the left side is a kind of open by. So it's a combination of a different kind of mild occlusion and happening in this patient. From the preoperative, the CT. Uh, it's a kind of weird because uh, from the upper mid and the lower face, all the skeletal the arrangement is the misorient misoriented. So you can see from the mid face, from the nasium, the kind of deviated to the right and the turn on over the nasal septum. And however, the right facial lens and the left facial lens, uh, a side is the longer than the other side. However, the other side is wider than the other side. And you can see retrieve the height in the left the maxilla lens. So the maxilla tooth could not touch to the lower part of the teeth on the mandible. And from the side by side in the CT, you can see from the SEO view, and we can trace from the bottom to the top. This is a little bit to see a kind of a counterclockwise rotation uh, of the ma maxilla. And you can see the, the plane in between the motor and uh, the perpendicular to the incisor. This angle is already turned around more than a 90 degree over here. So kind of uh, upper maxilla is rotated to the right with a much acute angle. And then when we trace upward, you can see the retrieval of the maxilla and the kind of uh, maxilla or molar atrophy over the right side. And the patient shows the right smaller the maxillary sinus than the left side and uh, with uh, S torsion of a nasal septum. But Curiously, you can see patient did not complain any about of the nasal stuffness. Let's show a very kind of a patent of the nasal pass, a pass airways. However, I just mentioned about patient if she presented a kind of a progocephaly, but you can see in the CCT the photos for the anterior part, it's kind of very careless patterns, but in the posterior valve, you can see kind of a symmetry like the patent in her appearance.
So not like a project safely like. So we can trace upper wall to the orbital area, the same as Moin sinus deviated too. So we can trace her pattern in the coronal view. In the coronal view, you can see uh, S torsion shape of the uh, facial light. So from like this, S torsion of the nasal septum again. And then you can see left side kind of be punctured with a fist over the left side and uh, with the uh, uh, inner retreated of the older skeletal structures. Yeah, and uh, the trapezial the shape is already be tilted uh, with the be involved in the boundary of the orbital border, nasal septum, and the upper mesida. But you, c you can easy to see. Actually, the bilateral condyle is located well in the exactly the glenoid fossa. So it, the patient could not be diagnosed it's like a presentative classification, this kind of so-called hemifacial microsomia. So the first of all, before we want to deliver the treatment um, for this patient, we have to have an optimal diagnosis first. So in the first, we will really want to rule out the patient if she has a hemimacial microsomia, but patient has no any problem over the ear, even patient have no facial palsy, patient has a very good hearing function, and the patient the manipulator is intact, no any insufficiency or deficit. Just only the patient show a very deviated the, fa the mandibular patterns. So um, it's difficult and the less likely to have this diagnosis of hemifacial microsomia. And for the secondary possible uh, diagnosis is the peri rhombus syndrome. But the patient show uh, no any kind of a very similar the presentation over the forehead. Uh, for the PR syndrome patient, we are easy to show a kind of a circumscribed patch of a scleroderma over the forehead area. So you can see the skin uh, discoloration over there, but patient has a very clear smoothness, the skin texture uh, over her face, even though patient has no any deficits over the neurologic, ocular, and the oral problems. So uh, I try to contact my mentors in UT Southwestern, uh, Dr. Ellis Kim, to consider and to search for the further possible diagnosis for these patients. And uh, my mentor said, no, he has no experience like this. So he tried to um, um, contact the, gen ge the neonatologist and the genetics the expert in his centers. So finally, probably we can have a conclude is that this probably is a primary embryologic problem and the originating early about the time of the phase formation week, uh, five to eight weeks, but not bad enough to cause the failure of all the seem to close. So yeah, based on this possible diagnosis of the zygomatic mastodontary schuchosinostosis, uh, we try to find the best, the optimal treatment for her. So we can review this patient uh, since her, her first child, childhood. This is the first time patient was brought to our clinic uh, in the Professor Yure Chen's clinic about uh, 20, almost 30 years ago, 1992. In the first times, uh, we are curious about why we have this kind of uh, facial appearance the patient. And uh, we has hesitated and has no idea because patient has no complaint any probably the oral nasal fistula like the cleft palate or any kind of facial deficit like uh, the cleft patient. So we just want to follow, check, and uh, to see what will happen in the future. One year later, one year later, and then after the patient has a little bit of teeth burst out, we can see based on her distorted bone, all the teeth come out is kind of very disoriented and uh, misaligned as well. So one year later, five years later, three years later, one year later, and uh, one year later, she is our very good friend, and uh, his parents is our very good good friend as well uh, in uh, Professor Yue Chen's clinic. Yeah, here, here. So follow up till her age of 28, he, she decided to do. And you ask us, oh, what I can be, be done by your expertise and uh, can make me myself to have better looking. 
and uh, please, can you solve my dental malocclusion? I think if the malocclusion can be resolved, that will enhance my all the daily life functions. So before the surgery, we have a lot of a discussion to how to have the best, the optimal the treatment for her. Yeah, based on this kind of uh, CT, we have some the possible treatment as for the following. Probably we want to give uh, only one surgery, or we can divide it into a stage reconstructive surgery. So we have some different kind of sort of here. If we want to give the patient only one surgery, probably we can do have to do a lot of a procedure in the same time, and uh, the surgery time probably will last 10 or 20 hours, including probably we have to provide it level one, level two, and uh, we have considered level three as well. But uh, all the experts told us, if we want to take care of the mean face, and we want to take care of the occlusal problem at the same time, probably you have one choice only. You have to do the simultaneously level one and level two surgery at the same time. That means all the mean face you have divided into the mean facial upper part and the mean facial lower part to restore the whole nose and the all the good dental occlusion. But Based on, we have a very wonderful rhinoplasty master in our centers. I think in this patient, it's hard for us to give her a based the nasal performance after the one stage procedure. So in the first beginning, we are trying to do our best in the stage surgery. So we want to try our best in the first one is to give her a good orthodontic surgery to correct the good occlusal plan first. So in our center, uh, we can design, and uh, we have a very good orthodontic doctor, and uh, we choose, probably we can do the level one osteotomy, and as well as the bilateral sagittal splitting osteotomy, at the same time, this is one we prefer. And uh, we do not want to touch any related to the nose or in the inferior orbital ring. That means level two osteotomy is not be considered in our first stage reconstruction. And then, after the first stage, well, probably six months or one year later, the rhinoplasty probably could be considered to correct for her better the nasal performan performance. So this is the, in the beginning, the uh, surgical designing. And uh, Professor Daniel Wang is the, our cooperated orthodontics in these patients. We have a lot of uh, facial evaluation before the surgery. And then we try to make our surgical plan for her. And uh, in our center, all the designing for this kind of facial symmetry, we always based on uh, three different rules and the principle. The first one is we want to correct the row um, dif discrepancy. And then we will consider to correct the yaw discrepancy. And last, final one, we will try to have a better fa facial profile according to correcting the pitch rotations. So yeah, this patient has all of the evolved the, the problem as I showed. She need the row, she need the yaw, and she need a pitch. So this is the first uh, initial problem of the patients the, in the software. The first one, after we put on the final stand, then you can see how this tour of the mandible we should be done in this surgery. So uh, after we put on the final stand, it's difficult to achieve this kind of a result. And of course, it's not done by our surgical plan. And then we'll follow to have a better row discrepancy. After we correct like that, you can see kind of a MMC is already be put on back into the central mean line. But if you go to see the bottom view, all the mandibular level is not be corrected. So once you do the yaw rotation like this, the mandible now is be correct like a good uh, positions after the MMC yaw rotation. But you, you know this the MMC is a little bit far away from the mean line. So after we shift the MMC into the upper and total mean line with the nasium, but you know actually the nasium is not really on the correct uh, mean line position as well. That's why I didn't tell the patient has the upper middle and the lower face Asymmetry. So we try our best to give her the, 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 the best result. So like this, and then a little bit adjustment, and finally 
and touch up with the final plasma segment for her. So this is our final the surgical the calculation. So why is the really movement of the each detail, the major uh, pillars, like the medial pillar and the lateral pillar, and the how much is the gap we have to close in between the interposition segments. So you can see over the left side of the lateral um, pillars, we have downward about 9 to 10 millimeter. And uh, the right side, a little bit like uh, upward, 5 to 6 millimeter. So this is a huge row rotations movement uh, for her. That's why we want to like a little bit pull out of the lab, retreat the mesla and the advancement and try to give her a much better alive of the upper mesla. And from the lateral view, a little bit of the advancement will be planned to a little bit of advancement for the MMC. So uh, after the result, I think for a better fixation, for a better uh, stability, uh, it's hard to to predict because, um, uh, as one professor Ray Chance mentioned uh, several times, you want to have a better stability. The first one you have to have very stable fixation for the patient, and then you have to release all the connected or related muscle attachment. So I try to design a much better stability for the right side of the mesla to have a better contact and the pillar by pillar or segment by segment. And I leave a lot of uh, space over the left mesla and later will be augmented by any possible behaviors for a bone grub over here. And this is the upper view and this is the lateral view. And this is what we design for the intermediate stand. And actually for the design for intermediate stand, I try to use in the mandible first and not instead of a mastery first. That's because a huge downward of the mastery, you cannot easy to design the mastery first stand. That's why I can correct the mandible first. So this is the preliminary plan for this patient, mandible first plan. Okay, and then bone graft on a mandible, just like uh, the Hansuk procedure, we can easily to harvest the medial uh, gonial bone graft over there. Uh, or otherwise, a uh, secondary possible, the harvest site is the coronary process. And then the fourth one is the most challenging area because you need to do the right advancement six millimeter, left downward nine millimeter, and the left periform shift to the left eight millimeter, and then the right lateral budget should be contact very good. And this is the uh, orthodontic Dr. Professor Daniel Wang gave us the preoperatively. Uh, this is when we fit up the intermediate stand over the left photo and the right photo is the final stand. This is the photo shows uh, what happened in the level one osteotomy. Over the right side, yes, uh, we achieve the advancement and the intrude. And over the left side, a huge bone grab between the lateral pillar, inner lateral pillar and out the lateral pillar. We both put on a very stable, firm, clear, and uh, without any bone marrow, the both the bone grab over here to try to stand in and augment it and uh, to stabilize all the bone structure in the left side of the mastery. So this is the final CT, this is the pre and the post. So you can see around the 10 or 15 millimeters, the advancement over the left side of the bone of the mandibular segment. And the right side, we, uh, the plan is the setback. <laughs> Much huge differences. This is the lateral view, lateral view, bottom view. But you can easily to know, yeah, even we try a lot, the kind of uh, result is not so symmetric and uh, not very nice. But you can see this is the change before the surgery and then after the surgery, before and after. This is before and after. This is before and after. Yeah, this is the post-operative the one month later. And you can see uh, the nose remain uh, on the original side. But actually, in this procedure, we try to burr over the left nasal periphone area and uh, hope the nasal soft tissue could be 
a little bit traced into the midline position and not so deviated to the right side because we are looking for the secondary refinement procedure by the rhinoplasty doctors. Two months later, four months later, six months later, ten months later, Professor Huang finished her orthodontic treatment. So this is the before the surgery, and we can see what the difference is before the surgery. You can see again, and the one week later, then the right, the very right one is the debunked CT. And this is the airway change in between perioperatively. Actually, no any up sleep, uh, obstructive sleep apnea happening in this patient. So airway just uh, only a reference for you. AP viewer airway, lateral viewer airway. Yeah, 10 months of orthodontic treatment based on a surgery first approach. You can see much improved in the occlusal problem. Upper row is the preoperatively. Lower row is the debunking occlusal uh, status. You can see the superimposed pre and the post. A um, lot of the rotated and the change of the two jaw surgery. And this is the final superimposed for her. This is the pre and the post from the AP view. Yeah. So I think it's hard to design uh, the best, and uh, you do not really know what is the best uh, treatment plan for her. So probably in the future, and uh, actually this patient is my, my very good friend as well. So um, probably in the future, he she will really want to another one, the rhino rhinoplasty for her, then have a better symmetric and harmonized result. Is it the bottom view? Yeah, so take home message in this the presentation is that the surgical timing uh, is essential to know and uh, you have to discuss and uh, have a lot of uh, follow up and uh, to know what is the really patient's demand and uh, you can give her the best uh, surgical result. And then the option of the reconstruction should be based on what the facility you can have in your center. If your center could not have a one time stage the surgery or you can have another very good expertise to do the rhinoplasty, probably you can do a very good cooperation together. And uh, finally, functional and a cosmetic result is always our concern to treat the patient with any facial asymmetry. Thank you for your attention.